Welcome to Malaya Skater Hoops video cast. This is Kevin Brockway, Florida men's basketball beat writer from the Gainesville Sun, and I'm joined by the one and only Jake Winderman. He's everywhere. He works for ESPN Gainesville, Rivals, you name it, he's there. Hardworking student reporter here in Dallas, Texas, uh, covering Florida in the NCAA tournament. And the Gators live to play another day. They do. They do. They knocked off St. Bonaventure 77-62 uh, on Thursday night, late night game on uh, True TV. I know some of the people in Gainesville weren't too happy about that. Just that, a couple. Uh, but uh, on Saturday night, the Gators move on to play Texas Tech. And the good news is it'll be on TNT at 8.40 p.m. Uh, yeah, the uh, six seed Gators versus the three seed Texas Tech Red Raider. And if you'll see the stands behind us, they're going to be filled with red, uh, red fans, Texas Tech fans from throughout the state. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was talking to some Texas writers, Jake, and they told me that this is the largest alumni base uh, in the state in Dallas, Texas. So uh, not only is Florida going to have to deal with a very talented, uh, tough Texas Tech team, but they're going to have to deal with a, a road uh, atmosphere as well. Mm -hmm. No, it definitely makes sense. I mean, even in last night's game when Texas Tech played Stephen F. Austin, Stephen F. Austin about two and a half hours closer to Dallas and Texas Tech. And despite that, it was probably an 80-20 disparity between Texas Tech and Stephen F. Austin fans. But got to give credit to the Lumberjacks fan base. For as much as they were outnumbered, man, they were loud. I don't know if it was just because we were <laughs> sitting right in front of them, but they were passionate. Got to give them credit for a good fight. But Texas Tech obviously able to finish strong in the end. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about the uh, St. Bonaventure win. Uh, obviously uh, uh, a big one for Florida. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing if you think about it. I, I looked this up, Jake, 29-6 and six, uh, wow. in NCAA tournament games since uh, 2006. So this is a program that earned Billy Donovan and now Mike White, who's 4-1 in the NCAA tournament, always answers the bell. Uh, it was a little bit of a struggle in the first half, but pulled away in the second half. I thought that 9-0 run to start the second half mm -hmm. uh, was was really big and set the tone defensively. What were your thoughts about uh, how they started the second half? Well, as we've talked about a bunch of times, it's interesting. You see the fans on Twitter because Mike White in his press conferences, I mean 75 to 80 percent of his comments are about <laughs> defense. And you see fans saying, why isn't he talking about the three-point shooting and their potent offense and all their different players? Well, it's because their best defensive efforts produce their biggest wins. It produces their best efforts. You saw it last night. They forced 18 turnovers, led to 25 uh, points off of turnovers, and they had 24 fast break points on top of that. Even when they went a stretch of about seven minutes without hitting a shot, they were still able to keep it close because they played strong D on the other end. They were able to make St. Bonaventure uncomfortable. And then we saw in the second half, you talked about that run. Once Florida got going and started to take that lead, we saw Florida's poise on both ends of the floor, which St. Bonaventure didn't have. They won that same. They won that uh, UCLA playing game, not because they were the better team or the more talented team, but because they were hard-nosed, played tough defense, and sort of played a tough 40-minute game. Unfortunately, Florida completely countered that effort in the second half. They stayed poised. They didn't get rattled. And when St. Bonaventure sort of started to fall apart, they were taking bad three-point shots, and that's when you saw Florida extend their lead to 20-plus. Yeah, you know, and I thought they were settling for threes a little bit too much uh, against the zone in the first half. They had 19 three-point attempts. Second half. Packed mm -hmm. the basket a little more. I thought Michael Caro came up with a big drive. Kayvon Allen, Jalen Adam, uh, Jalen Hudson, excuse mm -hmm. me, in succession. And uh, from there, that opened things up. Hudson hit a big three to put him up 50 to 35. Then that really good three point play as well, yeah. uh, where he got the offensive rebound uh, and the putback and his confidence in the second half. Uh, really was uh, was good to see for Gator fans as well. What, what was cool about that play is he didn't just dunk over uh, St. Bonaventure players. <laughs> he dunked over his own teammates, climbed the ladder, and went up for that. I knew Hudson was athletic, but like Chios and uh, Igor Kulichov said after the game, they didn't even know he had that in him. <laughs> and now it's on to Texas Tech, and we both watched a game before mm -hmm. where they beat Stephen F. Austin. And listen, uh, Texas Tech was down eight points. They were struggling a little bit. They, they started out the game a little flat. But when they really needed uh, to pull away, they did. And uh, obviously, Keenan Evans was a big reason mm -hmm. why, scoring eight of the last 15 points. Well, Keenan Evans is this team's closer. A Wendell Bartlehouse of The Athletic compared him sort of to Mariano Rivera, and that's exactly what he was. Didn't miss a shot in the second half. Six of six from the field, one for one from beyond the arc, and six of six at the free throw line. They put the ball in his hands, and essentially what they did is they grinded Stephen F. Austin down. They played 35 minutes of tough defense, forcing long possessions. I mean, that's what Texas Tech does. They force their opponents to play extremely long possessions and wear them out, so they get uh, easier opportunities on the offensive end. 
You know, Texas Tech only led this game for six minutes, and that stretch was sort of at the end. Keenan Evans, they put the ball in his hands and told him, go get a basket, whether it's a three-pointer, whether it's driving to the basket, making circus plays look routine. That's what Keenan Evans does. It's a reason he's a second-team All-American, and it's a testament to exactly what you need in the NCAA tournament. We talked about it on the last video, sort of with Jalen Adams and Chris Chioza. Senior guards, specifically senior point guards with experience, are what win you tournament games. And you could tell, like Florida yesterday in the second half, he had the point to finish it off for Texas Tech and I mean he's one of the better players in the country sort of on both ends of the floor he's in hockey they talk a lot about two-way <laughs> forwards he's a two-way guard he's an excellent defender is able to force a ton of turnovers and then on the offensive end he can score from all levels of the floor it is a treat for Chris Beard to have a player like that especially as a senior who's been there for four years and has that experience so how I, how do you deal with him Jake I, you know it's mm -hmm. interesting you know Mike White you know he's very much man defense switching man defense mm -hmm. Uh, do you uh, do you switch? You throw some big guys at him. How, how do you how do you contain him and how do you contest? Well, I think they need to take the opposite approach of what they did with Jalen Adams. Whenever there was a screen up high, they would double trap up top so that Jalen Adams couldn't get off that three-point shot. But that's because Adams is more of a shooter than he is a driver. With Jalen Adams, the problem is he can sort of do it all. He can hit the three and he can go to the basket. So I think with Florida, there's going to be a lot of switching action. These are two teams that are both guard heavy. So the thing is, there's going to be as many guards on the Florida end as there is on the Texas Tech end. Whether it's having to switch Chios and Allen on them, then Allen to Hudson or, or uh, Hudson to Cooley job they're gonna have to play active defense and they're gonna have to be ready for anything because like I said not just a shooter like Jalen Adams he can score from anywhere I think they're gonna need to stay consistent on the switching end and I think it'll be important for the big men to slide over in the paint when he comes to the basket Texas Tech's big men aren't I'm not going to say they're not talented, but they're not not—they're not what beats you when Texas Tech plays you. What wins Texas Tech games is Keenan Evans. Their main priority has to be stopping him. If they give up a couple of layups to their centers and power forwards, so be it. You don't lose to their power forwards and centers. You lose to Keenan Evans. You know, and I noticed in the game that uh, Texas Tech's uh... – you know, uh, power forwards and centers are a little shaky around the rim finishing. So it's not just Florida, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of teams have these problems. Not everybody has a, a Marvin Bagley the third or a DeAndre it, it, It's Aiden. not just Kavarius Hayes. Other exactly. people miss layups. Yeah, no question. But, uh, you know, we saw an old friend, too, Brandon Francis. Mm -hmm. uh, now he goes by Brandon Francis. He was, of course, Brandon Francis Ramirez uh, two years ago when he played for the Gators before he transferred mm -hmm. to uh, Texas Tech. And he hit a big three-pointer late. Uh, in the win over Stephen mm -hmm. F. Austin. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit in the locker room, and he says still holds no ill will towards Florida and that, uh, you know, uh, he wouldn't get mm -hmm. into exactly the reasons why he transferred, but he's he's very happy in Texas Tech now and uh, certainly mm -hmm. another guard the Gators are going to have to contend with. Yeah, and it certainly is. And another added aspect, which a lot of people might not think about, I sort of asked Chris Beard about it, and I asked him, you know, did you go to Brandon Francis? Obviously, that was a way <laughs> different team when he was on there. They couldn't hit a three-pointer, and they basically played full-court press for a good amount of the game, so it's a different identity. But he said, or Chris Beard said, that he talked to Brandon Francis Ramirez, and in practice when they were running sets and their scout team was sort of trying to mimic what Florida does, they would go to Brandon Francis and say, hey, does Florida, did, did they do this? Did they do that on offense? Did they do that on defense? So, obviously, they have a bit of an advantage in the personnel aspect but Brandon Francis Ramirez does give them a little bit of scoring off the bench as you mentioned he's able to hit the three the only thing is he is a slight defensive liability it'll be interesting to see if when he's in the game if Mike White decides to attack him when the Gators are on offense yeah certainly and uh, you know uh, going back to the St. Bonaventure game uh, how terrific did Chris Chioza play I mean 11 assists to no turnovers mm -hmm. three steals I had eight points he had a few mm -hmm. out of control shots but how key is he going to be, do you think, in this game as a stabilizing force mm -hmm. uh, in terms of particularly dealing with uh, you know, the crowd that they're going to yeah. deal with here uh, tomorrow night in Dallas? And, I mean, you mentioned that he had 11 assists and no turnovers. First time that's happened since the 2011 NCAA tournament. But as I mentioned, in having a senior guard, you have a player with poise. No matter what this game may seem like with the Texas, fans, Texas Tech fans screaming down their throat, he sort of said they experienced that against Gonzaga in the PK-80. And in last year's NCAA tournament, when they played Wisconsin in that Sweet 16 game, it was people might not remember, but there was a lot more Wisconsin fans than there was Florida fans. And is there any bigger setting than Madison Square Garden in any sort of basketball or hockey setting? So if Chris Chioza was able to step down, hit that floater three-pointer to give them the win over Wisconsin, I think he's ready for any situation. Yeah, no question. And, uh, you know, I... Uh... I'm, I'm through predicting with this team because uh, every time I think they're going to win, they're going to lose. Every time I think mm -hmm. they're going to lose, they're going to win. It's just been 
that kind of year, up yep. and down year. But Jake, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, do you have a prediction for tomorrow? I do have a prediction. I uh, I do predictions over on our Rowdy Roundtable podcast over on uh, ESPN 98.1 FM and 850 AM WRUF, the radio station back in Gainesville. I said Florida is going to win this game 67-62. to 62. It is going to be a defensive-heavy contest. Two teams in the top 20 in defensive efficiency. Both teams extremely efficient at stopping the other team. You know, I think there won't be a lot of offense in the first half. I think it'll be like the same Bonaventure game where there's going to be a lot more offensive production in the second half, but it's still going to be a low scoring game. Keenan Evans will get his 20. That's going to happen, but it's a matter of can you limit him to 20 on an inefficient night. So there's a difference between him going for 20 on whatever it is, 8 of 11 shooting, and a difference of going for 20 on 8 of 20 shooting. <laughs> so it's a matter of stopping Keenan Evans. If they do that, if they do that, Florida's going to win this game. All right, so I'm going to pack my bags for Boston. I'm taking your <laughs> word for it. So uh, we'll see if the Gators can get back to the uh, Sweet 16. If that's the case, that'll be you know, six straight NCAA tournament mm-hmm. appearances that they've made where they've at least made the Sweet 16. Uh, that would be an impressive feat mm-hmm. and certainly impressive for Mike White. So for Jake Winderman, this is Kevin Brockway from a special Gator Hoops video cast from beautiful Dallas, Texas, signing off. <laughs>